Hey class, um, it's September 11th, 2022. Um, I'm recording a brief intro lecture. I think a lot of you can tell the, uh, the podcasts that I've recorded have been recorded uh, over the last couple of years. I may get a new podcast in this semester, lecture, maybe two, maybe none, who knows. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the, the recordings. They've worked pretty well. But I do try to record a new uh, intro to e every week just to keep it uh, fresh um, for everybody, uh, including me. Um, so we're moving into an extremely uh, important period of transition in the history of Texas. In 1821, Spanish Texas uh, becomes Mexican Texas. Uh, the, the Mexican Revolution uh, is successful in throwing the Spanish out of North America. Uh, and so for a period of between 1821 and 1836, Texas becomes Mexican. And then, of course, in 1836, Texas becomes an independent republic, really under the rule of Anglos. This is also the period of Texas history when my family on my mom's side came into Texas. Um, the late 1830s, they got here just after the Texas Revolution. Uh, on my mom's side, uh, my family lived in Llano in the hill country, although uh, my grandmother and her ancestors, uh, they were poor rural Texans. They moved around a lot. Uh, their lives were not easy. Um, nonetheless, my, my family makes its, its appearance uh, in Texas uh, during this period as well. So just a reminder, uh, you're going to need to know 1821. Uh, that's a date that's very significant as we shift from Spanish to Mexican history. And then, of course, um, uh, 1836, when uh, Texas becomes an independent republic, which is a date, date I'm, I'm assuming most of you all know. So the big picture is uh, we're moving from Spanish rule uh, to Mexican rule. And this is the period where Texans uh, or Anglos start coming into Texas in large numbers. Um, Anglos from the United States had not really come into Texas until the 1820s. The Spanish, is, as I talk about, were very, very suspicious of the United States. They were very paranoid that the United States was going to come in and steal Texas, which the U.S. would have done. That's what Jefferson would wanted to do. Um, but it, it, during the last months or the last year or so of Spanish rule, uh, Spain's very weak in Texas. They're getting pounded by the Comanche, um, and they're willing to open the door to Anglos from the U.S. and their slaves, by the way. They're coming in to grow cotton, and there's always a tight connection between the cultivation of cotton and slavery. So we're also talking about the introduction of African-Americans into Texas during the 1820s as well. There were some African folks of African descent in Texas before 1821, um, but not very many. But uh, beginning in the 1820s, we start to see more folks uh, uh, enslaved uh, being forced into Texas. The, these folks did not come to Texas because they wanted to come to Texas. They were forced into Texas. Uh, by their owners, and their owners were coming into Texas for the most part to grow cotton in order to make money. So big picture, Texas is finally becoming part of the global cotton economy, which is something that I'm going to talk about a lot uh, over the next couple of weeks. Uh, during the Spanish period, Texas was a, a backwater. It was kind of a drain on Spain. The biggest industry was ranching. Uh, goat ranching, uh, which is not as romantic, uh, but you also had some uh, cattle ranching as well. Uh, what I talked about, the invention of the vaquero and um, the ranchero, and one of the enduring legacies of the Spanish period in Texas. But what we're happening, what's what's happening here is the dominant economy of Texas is shifting from um, ranches uh, uh, to a cotton economy. And with the cotton economy, what we have is the introduction of enslaved uh, Texans uh, for, of African descent uh, coming across the Sabine. So the story is, is changing pretty remarkably and, and pretty quickly. Now, 
the big thing that I do in this course is I want you to understand how the Texas Revolution is a mesh in Mexican politics um, and how it becomes part of Mexican politics. And most significantly and surprisingly, it, the arguments in Mexico about slavery. Most Mexicans were anti-slavery. Um, the only Mexicans that really supported slavery, chattel slavery, uh, were those in the north, in, in Texas and also in Saltillo. And beginning in this week, you're going to learn about uh, what Texas's role was uh, in the Mexican Republic. It was, it was a junior partner. Uh, you're going to learn about the folks moving into Texas. So pay attention to how Texas is becomes part of Mexican politics how slavery really is the thorn in the side of the relation between Anglos and the Mexican government, because no Anglos would come into Texas to grow cotton unless they could bring their slaves into Texas, the enslaved that they owned, who are being brought into Texas unwillingly. But what they run into in Mexico is, is a nation that really is for the most part, anti-slavery. The only folks that really support slavery in Mexico, the only Mexicans, are those that want to profit off it. And these are folks that names that you would recognize to get today, like Seguin, uh, De Zavala. Um, the elites in San Antonio are willing to work with Anglos to introduce slavery into Texas. Now, don't get confused. I'm throwing a lot of info at you. I break this down like I always do in the podcast. And what I'm trying to do here is just to kind of give you the big picture. And the big picture here is not only is the sovereignty of Texas changing from Spanish to Mexican to the Republic of Texas, and then ultimately is a U.S. state, the economy of Texas is changing as well from a ranching economy, which didn't really make that much money. Uh, to a part of the global cotton economy where fortunes were made. So this is the, the, the big shift economically is what leads Anglos to come into Texas from the U.S. So keep your eye on cotton and the importance of the cotton trade, but also note that the underbelly of the cotton trade was slavery. Uh, the, the close tie between the cultivation of cotton and the horrors of, the, uh, of slavery. Uh, as, as Anglos that came into Texas to grow cotton, in, in almost all cases, were trying to figure out a way to bring their slaves uh, uh, with them, their enslaved with them. Um, so this is, this is the beginning of, of, of an even multi different multicultural text. And it's also the beginning uh, of, of, of slavery becoming a, a significant part of the Texas economy. Again, cotton equals slavery, slavery e equal cotton, and we cannot forget the suffering uh, that is very much involved, is very integral uh, to the production of cotton, which at the same time is making some folks a lot of money.